Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. And I am so happy that Christmas is over. Yes, I am, except in my family, we actually celebrate the 12 days of Christmas, the Advent season. So my kids are still opening up presents 12 days after Christmas. So we're having fun playing a lot of games, having a good time. But before I leave to celebrate my anniversary with my wife this weekend, I've got a couple of videos to take a look at and it looks as if we have a new Jack and Joe competition that just posted. I'm super excited about it. It looks like it is Prague Swing Dance Festival, PSX. Um, I don't know the level of this competition. I'm not sure if I wanna know. But I'm gonna go into this as a judge with fresh eyes. I'm looking always for something new that I haven't seen or something that is familiar done a different way. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, the intricacies of what I look for as a, as a judge that differentiate the different levels if things get really close. But let's hope it's not close. I hope it's a slaughter. I hope someone just comes out swinging with such passion that it is a slaughter. My fingers are crossed. So let's see what happens. And here we go. All right, let's try this from the top. Yep, Prague Christmas Swing. I'm not sure if this is a Jack and Joe format or if it is a strictly People keep using different words for different things now, for whatever, that's like the new trend. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if it's gonna be partially choreographed and uh, some improvisation. I hope it's all improvisation. That's what I prefer. So let's see what happens. Uh, who's the band? I think it is Shirt Tell Stoppers. Yes, that's right. <laughs> this couple in the front. I'm digging her green shoes. Ba 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 ba. It's so hard to play different versions of this song, this Fats Waller song. But sure, tell Stompers gets pretty close at like nailing it for me. I think it is them. Let's see. Uh, yes, I know this MC. He's so funny. Andreas. Oh, Andreas Olsen. He's not dancing. He's actually counting. If you don't know who he is, you should look him up. He's a fantastic dancer. Uh, I don't. I think that I might be a Jack and Jill format. This guy's so funny. I've stolen so many of his jokes at events. <laughs> I've used them in my life. Sometimes they've worked, but most of the time they don't. Yes, yes. And then there's going to be four eights, and then we're going to swing out. Yeah. All right, here we go. So now I know some of these dancers, I've seen a few of them. So I can speculate that the level should be a little higher. So I'm going to be a little bit more picky. I'm not just going to be looking to see if they can dance because that's obvious at this level. I want to see something fresh and something new. Let's hope it happens. Yes.
turn so that's impressive when they can lead stuff like that and follow stuff like that and it isn't a strictly big points for me that's really really huge timing hey yes <laughs> they got the timing of that at the same time. I always love seeing what happens in those situations. Because everybody knows that step, but you just don't know what's going to happen. Hey!
In your face. In your face. <laughs> I love that. Drum roll, please. <laughs> that line swing out never gets old. But I gotta admit, it feels so much better when you're seeing it live. Oh. guys that was fun that was fun um, I have to admit there were some dancers that impressed me a little bit more when I saw them their first round and then there were some dancers who impressed me more their second round um, and then there were some dancers who were able to balance both rounds they came at it with a certain level of intensity that was constant for both uh, sets and for me that's really important it's really important on the Jack and Jill because, you know, when it gets really tough to judge a dancer versus another dancer, you got to look at their entire body of work. You're not just looking for the one move, but you're also looking for it in context to what they're doing throughout the entire competition, right? So uh, third place for me was a difficult decision to make. And the reason is, is because... If I'm judging by my normal standard, which is number one, I am looking for the most objective part of Lindy Hop to look at first, which is the control aspect of it. That's like I would say the 25% of Lindy Hop that is solely objective. That's the part that makes everybody's style work. It's that fundamental thing behind it. And most of the dancers, I'd say 90% of them, could manipulate the technique enough to where it looks intentional and it doesn't look like anybody's in pain. And so, with that being said, how do you differentiate between the dancers when they can all do that? So, that's a, just a rhetorical question. And, and for me, what I like to do is I look at the control and contact in contrast to timing and creativity, right? And so, since everybody had control, I had to look at the ones that were lacking the most in the creativity part or the timing part. So. Third place for me was difficult because there were two couples who really looked like they could control the technique. Um, the word I like to use for what I saw was safe. There was nothing too, too risky, it was safe. That isn't a bad thing in a competition. In fact, if you are controlled and safe, in my book, you get third place automatically. Most of the time I see a lot of competitions where the leader is just going nuts, they're super into it, they're just, Lots and lots of energy, but they are totally forgetting about their partner, right? And sometimes it's the other way around, where the follower is just like doing all this kind of stuff, and the leader is just like, here's my hand, just do whatever you want, right? I didn't see that in this competition. So the, the group, the couple that got third place for me was the very first couple. It was gentlemen, uh, I think it was like a navy blue jacket and tan pants. And his partner had like a black, it looked like a black skirt. I don't know their names, but they were fantastic. They came out, confidence, uh, 
if I was wanting to figure out how to learn swing dancing and they danced, I could go, okay, good. I could see the clarity of their movements and I could probably imitate some of the movements with clarity and that's important to me. And so in my book, they got third place primarily because it was nice, it was safe. It had a, they had a little bit of timing in, in particular parts of the music where it was transitioning, like on that fourth eight count. And they emphasized it a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, I would have wanted to see a little bit more because I think their timing was impeccable. They were doing some footwork syncopations and she was doing a whole lot and it was beautiful. But the leader wasn't doing a lot, which is important to me. I like to see them do less so that they can accentuate their partner, right? They set something up for their partner, let the partner do most of it and let them just embellish a little bit. And they were able to balance that. It's very difficult to take that uh, aspect of syncopations and balance that well without doing too much. And so for me, they, they nailed it. So they get third place. Uh, the couple that got second place to me was, this one was a little bit, this one was a little bit more obvious for me for second place. I couldn't give them first because of what the first place person had or the couple had. This couple, she had like a maroon dress on. She was great. She had like a maroon dress. He had a tan vest, a white shirt, tan pants. I loved their swing out. I loved their footwork syncopations. A lot of people use different terms to describe the same thing. When I use that word syncopation, I simply mean a rhythm inside of a rhythm. Of course, they're both dancing in the swing metronome, but some of them are doing different things with their feet that don't actually interrupt the technique of what they're trying to create together. And they were fantastic. I liked a lot of their syncopations. I liked a lot of their timing. Their timing was really special. The thing that, that, that separated them from the first place people for me was a little bit lack of the control. There should have been just a little bit more restraint by the leader. I think he was kind of just a little bit louder than his partner and those syncopations and it's a bit distracting. I can honestly say it's good that they're doing different things and expressing themselves and I'm seeing their personality, but sometimes it's at the expense of them sharing energy. I wanna see call response, call response, right? But sometimes it was call response and then the leader's moving while the response is happening and my eyes can't you know, uh, gradually shift to the main focus point, which is on the, the follower side, right? So their timing was impeccable, their syncopations were great, um, they had control of the technique, but for me, they were second place because there was less control when they were trying to do something uh, different than the basic swing metronome. And I would say that was more on the leader side. But um, that one's a hard one. That one's a hard one because they could have been first in my book. It could have been either first or second, but I'm a little bit more picky because I think the, the first place couple had what they were missing. And so for me, the first place couple Man, and I love her outfit. The, the, the girl that had the green uh, shirt and the green shoes uh, and the gentleman with the gray jacket. I think I know him. I'm not sure if it was him or not. I think he's from Russia, but fantastic. Fantastic dancing. What do you mean fantastic, Jamin? Well, they had control. It was clear. They could do a swing out. They could do a tuck turn. They could do a <laughs> Texas Tommy. They could do a little bit of hand-to-hand -hand Charleston whatever that, that was the easy part for this level so i wasn't looking too much at the control i was looking at the control in context to what they do that's different could they control it so they came out with some intro but they're both kind of hunched over and it looked like they were partners like it was choreographed they both were just going with it they both were completely relaxed there was nothing like you know she didn't have some weird look on her face like what are you making me do <laughs> right he was just naturally being a gentleman, leading with confidence. She was responding to it in a way where they were just one body. And I like that. And then they didn't, they didn't just start off doing stuff that my eyes automatically go, okay, I know what that is. They just came out doing this weird thing and then they kind of did some around the back thing and they just did some send out. And the timing of the music, I think that next eight count uh, was normally where people like to do the Suzy Q in a circle. Instead of just doing what I expected, they were just kicking their feet, just kind of going with the flow, keeping the same energy. For me, that's just as powerful as, it's, it's almost as powerful, I wouldn't say it's equal, 
but it's almost as powerful as doing something that hasn't been seen before because they took something familiar and they added another level to it that made them stand out a little bit more than who they were dancing against. Now, they not only just didn't have that, they had, they had that, but they had syncopations, much like the couple that I thought got second place, but their syncopations was much, were much more controlled. Their, their energy level for both leader and the follower were the same. It wasn't like the leader was doing this and the follower was just like, hey, let me say something. Let me just get a sentence in, right? I didn't see that. I didn't see it once. Could have happened, but I didn't see it as a judge when I first watched it. And that's really what's most important. So they had the timing. They had the creative aspects of doing something different that, that we are familiar with. And they had the control part. Now their control, like I said, was better than the couple that was second place. Now, the second place couple, they were doing some other things too that were more creative, but because of the lack of control, it undermined the thing that they were trying to do. And so that's the, that's the difficult part about judging. That's, that, that's the subjective element of judging is I like to put what I believe out there, what I look at when I dance, because there's only so much that's subjective. That's that invisible technique of call and response that all the teachers communicate a different way, but that's ultimately what we're looking for first. And then we're looking at what can you do with that? Are you just gonna do the same thing? Are you gonna do something that we haven't seen in a fresh way in time that doesn't violate the main thing you're trying to do? And so I take all of those things into consideration when I'm judging. I like to put it out there. So control, timing, creativity, those are my top three. Um, shout outs to everybody who did that because getting up in front of an audience and doing a Jack and Jill, I don't care how, how long you've been dancing, it is not easy. You can still get the jitters, get out there and think you're awesome and then slip all of a sudden and it's forever on the internet. Like everybody knows that's like the only thing that you keep thinking about every time you do a subsequent competition. It's like, dang, I hope I don't slip, right? But shout out to everybody who competed because I think Competitions are good for you. It's good for the individual if they are uh, wanting to grow in the dance. You gotta be willing to grow somewhere in the dance. So if it's, I'm scared to dance in front of people, do a competition. If it's, I've been practicing a whole bunch of cool stuff, do it in front of a competition. Because it puts pressure on you and, and some of your best dancing will come out when you have pressure. And that's the beauty of competitions. It allows you really to kind of show the audience what you've been working on over maybe a long period of time or you know maybe a short practice that you've been working on, but it allows us to see what has become part of you in a natural way. Sometimes you can memorize things and just botch it even with that, with choreography, but sometimes when you practice and go through a whole lot of routine and repetition, the things that people don't care about, the things that people don't praise you about, those practices with your partner and you're arguing, you go through that all the time and you develop some habits and you put yourself in a position of pressure, those things naturally come out and we get a real snapshot of all of your hard work. That's why I really love these types of competitions. It's like sports to me. It's the only thing that's really real on television, right? Except for those referees. We don't know if they're paid off or not. So, But anyway, who do you guys think won this competition? This was great. This is great. I've never been to Prague. I hope I hope this event's going to be happening next year. If you haven't been to this event, you're in the area, I encourage you to check out Prague Christmas Festival. I think I said that right. PSX. It sounds fun. It sounds like you have an opportunity to get out there and social dance a little bit and maybe hopefully take some classes. But it looks like it's an all-around good time. If you guys are struggling on just trying to figure out a really streamlined approach to getting good at social dance quickly, I encourage you to check out some of my classes below. I spend a significant amount of time providing content for our community online here in my studio right next door. And we love it. I like creating new things all the time. That's my gift. That's my talent. That's what I work hard on. But also I like helping people not have to take forever to master Lindy Hop, right? And don't listen to anybody who tells you it's hard. It just basically means they can't make it clear to you how simple it should be, right? Riding a bike is easy. It's just pedaling, balance, and steering. The hard part is processing it 
And so we approach Lindy Hop the same way. And we hopefully can help you guys process it in a way where you can gain confidence and fix yourself while you're social dense. And so anyway, what do you guys think about this competition? I loved it. Who do you think should have won? Let me know in the comment section. If I don't see you in class uh, on one of our classes online, I will see you in the next reaction video. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.